lived, and I say lived because it's in the past because they can live there. I think it's like from 50 to 100, maximum 200 meters. The houses are, it's it's devastating over there. It's uh, well, we saw one of the of the of the employees' uh, houses, uh, and this guy. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't know how. Well, if it was me, I know that I can not live without. Well, in there, but uh, they have like above three foot of pure uh i don't know how to call it the uh, lodillo they say over here in spanish uh you can say like um like sludge i think it's like a sludge like it's like the combination of uh, of water yeah and uh and the mud and the mm -hmm. and all the trash is coming from the uh from the from the rivers uh, it's it's really gross uh, and, and 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 the part of gross it's not the gross thing is that taking up of the, of the house and of the and of the and of the road that they have over the street that they have over there uh, you need a, you need big machines like um, for example they got this uh, this idea of chamelecon that they need uh, some uh, some cat uh, caterpillar uh, devices in order to get all the mud all over the river but the thing is that they need to wait in order from the this new storm slash hurricane so well that's that's the i think the previous things i don't know if you have any questions well I don't know. Yeah, what i i don't so what i first i'll hi yes oh my hello. god we, hey, all, we all look so much hey. like each other hola carmen hello how are you guys just just hello. in fairness i want everyone to know that the record button is on so, oh yeah. yeah oh sorry <laughs> no 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 actually while you were talking i wanted to turn it on. oh hold on it's recording live <laughs> i have derek derek in the background playing with the ps5 <laughs> it's, not, it's not recording live but this will air like this what's on right oh. now um let's take five minutes out of everyone's time just to make sure we feel comfortable with ourselves <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you're gonna edit some of it, right? Oh, well, I don't know. This this is gold, right? Totally so stop us, I think. Uh, <laughs> this is great. Authentic. <laughs> we all, I feel like, could use a laugh right now. So, oh my god, it literally was like, and I'm like. <laughs> um, what I wanted to say was, I okay. So for people who are watching right now, um, Eron, you are in Honduras. Yeah. Um, Yasid. You are in Guatemala, Ciudad de Guat the city of Guatemala. Yeah. Um, Jenny, you are in Arizona, and I'm in Canada. And what I thought was really interesting was, first off, I wanted to hear, um, Eron is, as, as um, Yassid was just telling me a bit ago, like he's boots on the ground. He's there, he's seeing everything, and he's just, he's trying to help with his company, with himself. Um, and Yassid in Guatemala, which you've kind of said to me, it's hard because you're in the city, but yet you're close enough and far enough at the same time that you there's only so much you can do there. Because right. Logistics. And with me and my sister, what I thought was really surprising was how close, this isn't like it's on the other side of the world, and yet so many people in the U.S. and Canada have no idea what's going on. And I thought this was at least an opportunity to kind of share. I also wanted to let you guys know that we had been trying to raise the money that you guys have been helping us talk about um, to try to, we thought first maybe a few hundred dollars and then we thought 5,000 so we could send half and half. And today, like two hours ago, we got the, we made the 5,000. And yeah. yeah, and so I just wanted to say thank you to all the people who are doing, I don't actually know, um, I don't want to get greedy, but I, I, part of me doesn't know if I want us to stop knowing that there's more still coming. But um, I thought this at least could be an opportunity for um, Eron, for you to share first off kind of what you're seeing there. You just were talking about it. Um, and then just kind of what the rest of us are feeling and hearing from our side. So Eron, like when you say you're helping out right now, or if someone was just saying like, I don't know what happened, what happened? What would you, how would you explain it to them? Like, what was Hurricane Edna, Edna and what was the effect of it? Okay, uh, 
first of all, uh, well, in my, this is my opinion, okay? Uh, our country's lack of, uh, the biggest lack is uh, our, go our government, uh, it's not like the, the, the best that we have. So if we could get, well, if we could get uh, the, uh, like the, right now, like right now, they are getting the the, the red zones alerts. Uh, they are getting uh, the how things might be or gonna be done. So uh, yeah, first of all, the the uh, the government didn't uh, didn't manage this uh, as the as how it is the uh, hurricane. They just thought that it's gonna be a storm, and uh, I think uh, well, it's a uh, it's a big uh, fact. At the at the week that we got the hurricane, uh, we got at the same time. Uh, it's like the uh, vacations. There are some vacations that we got uh, well, as a country, and most of the of the, of the stories. Uh, well, it's a it's a local uh, vacation. So we got from Thursday all over to the next week, free. So I think the government, in order to think about it, of well, in my position, I think they might thought that it would be good in order to uh, to increase the uh, the tourism and uh, in inner inner tourism and uh, grow the economy all over because of the the coronavirus. But then uh, we got the ETA and things got worse. Uh, we thought that in order to drink well, I don't know if Yassi, you have any other. I think I think there are, there are a couple of things that we need to take in consideration. I mean, um, first of all, there's a there's a also a, a geographic type of view that you need to see and understand where San Pedro Sula and, and its surroundings is. San Pedro Sula is in a is in a valley. It's in the Sula Valley, and and unfortunately, you have a big uh, chain of mountains that is called El Merendón, and they basically this surrounds the valley so all the rain that you're going to get around that area in the mountains is going to come down eventually so mm -hmm. it's basically on a slope so if you look at where the areas of these surrounding towns of where you have the biggest impacts this is a little bit on the lower end of the valley that's on one side and the other thing is that you have two major rivers going through basically the whole town. So what you have, and you have Chamelecon, which is a river, and, and right next to it, and I'm, I'm saying right next to it, a couple of meters next to it, you have yeah. a pretty big, I don't know, I don't know, 150, 200,000 people living there. And then you have La Lima, which it, you have two rivers. Well, first of all, you have Chamelecon as well going through it, and you also have Ulua, which is a also a very big river uh, in just a couple of kilometers away, so and the Mayan River too. It's it's it's, yeah. it's across the. Mm -hmm. So if you if you if you look at it from any type of perspective, from a geographic perspective, beginning, it's definitely going to become an issue once you get that amount of water. Just, and from what we heard, and I don't know, I don't know if you if you heard something different, but from what we heard, in two or three days, we got basically almost two months of rain. Uh, they told us that we got, oh, oh, well, this is not the, the right type, but yeah, I think that we got like about seven to eight feet of water in two days. Yeah. The, it's, it's big amount. So if you think about it and, and you add to the fact that you have all these, like you have basically San Pedro Sula, which is a city. And you have these little like surrounding uh, towns around the rivers as well. It's just a combination for things to go wrong whenever you get that amount of rain. Yeah, so that hard, I think it's hard to understand. Like it's hard, honestly, to see like the like the visuals and to understand that it, it like they almost don't even look real. And that's like what's so yeah. strange, like so hard to believe, like how people i mean you, the damage might not even really be fully understood till like what i don't is saying until every until the water goes away that's when you really see all the damage that's been really done yeah. and um 
it's just hard. It's hard to believe. And then when you show someone, at least up here, that has no clue, they're shocked that it could be even going on. Um, just with everything else going on in the world, on top of that, like another. Well, and I'll be, and I'll be the first one to admit that um, I didn't know what was going on. I mean, here in the U.S., we're kind of dealing with our own situation, right. you know, with the election going on, and you know, some other you know stuff going on <laughs> um so my parents were the one that kind of made me aware of it and I was just like what like how did I not know about this this is this is really bad um so it is really good for for everybody so, to be made aware of this like I don't and, and you know what Jen and it's and it's true because I mean unfortunately this came uh, I mean it wasn't going to flood the the newspapers or the news uh, websites or whatever. It, it was not going to be like that because basically, well, it's happening not only in very small countries, third world countries, unfortunately, uh, where we have very, very little to no preparation uh, for events like this to happen. And, and let's not forget, I mean, if we look at the history, we have we had a very similar event 22 years ago with Hurricane Mitch. Yeah. You know, and it basically it pretty much happened the same thing as it did right, right now. And did if you, you guys look get at any warning, did you guys get any kind of warning? Like besides, I mean, there's something, there's something to be said for being warned and then, you know, not taking the advice of that warning. But I mean, it wasn't just a storm. You know what I mean? Like, were you guys given a heads up at all? It's to how severe it was possibly looking. I think I that it's the process. I think it, it was the process because it was coming like a storm and they thought that it's going to be disappeared in Gracias a Dios that, uh, well, Gracias a Dios and Olancho that they are the biggest uh, departments from the uh, from the country. So we just thought, okay, there's going to be off over there. But the thing is that when this thing gets one day uh, ahead from over here, uh, it's hurricane... Uh, I think stage four, stage three. So it's gonna, yeah. it's big in one day, in one day. So that's the thing. It happened really fast, and you guys yeah. really, yeah. Twenty-four hours. We, it and it this, went from uh, a category one or two hurricane to a category four in like in I don't know, hours. like sixteen hours. Something. No, like no, that. It's, two hours. it's two hours. Uh, I, I, I just wow. remember that from from five to seven, this increases to four, stage four. It's yeah. really, really fast. Happened really yeah. fast. And I imagine, I imagine that there's not even like, even if you have a day warning, I imagine there's a lot of people that still like logistics and transportation and just moving your whole life. That, that's okay. not how it happens. And I think that's such an, um, like a North American way of thinking, right? You know, like we're like, okay, well you just get in the car and you can go and you can. That's, that's, the, that's the thing. So you realize, I'm, no, no, okay, that's, I'm, sorry. I'm gonna, go ahead, Okay, sorry. Uh, um, I just talked with somebody. Well, I think like a hundred people asking why you didn't leave, why you're still here, why, why. So I'm gonna put the the same question they asked me. Okay, I have worked forty years, thirty yeah. years. I'm working hard. This is my house. This is my big things, and the water is getting on. What do you think that I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stay with my things. I'm gonna stay with my house because I want to to not lose everything. And when they saw that those things are getting with the water all over with the with the river in the in the street, uh, they might thought, yeah, it will be a, a better decision if I left the house. So then, yeah, they they thought it's one it's a joke. I think, uh, and not only a joke because the thing that here in Honduras, the thing that the the people are really hardworking people so uh they think okay 40 years of my living over here in my house and they're gonna be destroyed i don't think so no i'm gonna stay so yeah oh sorry Adon. i just read an article from the honduras post and it was about that about how we don't understand how hard the work is how hard it someone has to work to get a home there because again our understanding is 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 it maybe as worldly as a lot of us think it is, but it's so hard and just to leave something that you've worked so hard for and the idea of insurances and all these things are not even a, a real yeah. thing. 
Um, well, I thought it, was, it just exactly what you just said. Right they don't now. exist in here. They don't exist insurance from house insurance, uh, TV insurance. We don't have anything of it. And even if and even if they they do exist, they're extremely pricey. So you're not going to be able to afford it. And, and, oh, and you know, I remember. I, I remember there, there's a, a well, <laughs> a new how I can say uh, there are new houses. Uh, they rent house. They they sell. They sold houses. Uh, I think the name is uh, Valle Escondido. The, I don't know if you heard about this. Yes. Yeah, I, I was just reading about it, but I haven't seen anything. I don't. I don't. I don't know what what's happening. The 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 interesting thing here is that uh, we got a this this guy from the company. They told us that he lost everything. Okay, so the water was above the 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 roof. So then uh, we told, okay, the house is six months new, six months uh, old, I think, and they told us no. Uh, the company told us that no, we don't have any insurance because if you if you read in the in the contract that you have, doesn't say any uh, ca uh, natural catastrophe, catastrophic event, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. natural disasters, or oh. yeah. And, and and you know it's it's one thing, and that's why I think that it's it's crazy because I mean Guatemala and Honduras are right next next to each other, but how it's impacted in Honduras and how it impacted in Guatemala, it also has to do with where, where it hit. Uh, because you also have a lot of damage here in Guatemala, but um, the difference is that you didn't have highly dense or populate populations in within that reach. You did have some small towns, uh, you did have major rivers, and what happens is that it went up north. So you had a lot, you have a lot of mountains, um, I mean, it, it went, it made basically a huge mess in Cobán, which is a town that's really nearby uh, where Tia Gilson lives. Mm -hmm. you know? um, that, and, that, and, and that's and just you where we, Sorry, Yassin, just for people that are watching this, that's where we have been working with uh, Frida, with the NOVA, yeah. and, they, and that's who we've been trying to send our resources to there um, to get stuff out. So hold on one second. I'm pausing this for a second. You guys, I'm going to resend you a link.